Okay, let me give a hint about how playing with garden paths actually answers probability problems. For example, let me go back to the very first example of just a single two-way fork between houses A and B. And what we'll do now is ask, how should we have people decide whether to go left or right when they come to that fork? For example, we might give them a coin and ask them to flip a coin. If they get heads, say please go left. If you get tails, please go right. That's one way to make people split between left and right. And again, if everyone did this, like a large number of people, we expect on average, half the people end up going left to house A, half the people going right to house B, because we believe that half the time you'll flip a head and half the time you'll flip a tail. Grand. Or instead of flipping a coin, maybe you like roll a dice. Roll a die, single die, just say that. You might either get an odd number, if you get an odd number, please go left. If you get an even number, please go right. Again, that's another way to equally split people up between left and right. This time by rolling a die and see if you get an odd number, one, three, or five, or an even number, two, four, or six. Actually, that suggests we can do more complicated garden path systems that might be a little less uh, balanced, more lopsided. For example, I could do this again with a die. Here's house A, here's house B. But this time, let's look at all the possible options of what someone could roll. For example, they come down a garden path, this time we'll have them come to a six-way fork. One, two, three, four, five, and six. In fact, have them, if they roll a one, go down that path, as I just called it. Call that path number two. If they roll a two, go down the two path. If you roll a three, go down the three path. Four path, five path, and go down the six path if you roll a six. And just have some fun. Let's suppose the people that you know, go to the one path end up in house A. People that go down a two path, that roll a two, go to house B. Those that roll a three, go over to house A. Those that roll four, five, or six, will follow the paths four, five, or six to house B. So there is a sort of lopsided version of that. And in fact, I can kind of see what's going on here if I draw the area model for this. Uh, I guess people come down. Here's a huge block of people in a small little square. I did draw a very big one, but that's the idea, it's fine. Big enough, I think. First of all, they split into six. So one, two, three, four, five, six equally sized blocks of people, of which some will get a one, some will two, or three, or four, or five, or six. But those that get a one end up in house A. So these would be A people. Those that get a three also end up in house A. So these people are A people, end up in house A. And the rest of them, two, four, five, six, end up in house B. So I can see right now, actually, one third of the people get an A, end up in house A by rolling a one or three, and two thirds of the people end up in house B by rolling a two, four, five, or six. So in some sense, I've kind of shown visually that the chances of rolling a one or three are one third, and the chances of rolling a two, four, five, or six are two thirds. All right, so let's actually start playing with some actual probability problems that look like they come from school textbooks or something, and draw garden paths for them, because it's kind of fun. But I need to clean the board, so I'll be right back. Okay, here's a classic probability problem. Terrible handwriting, so let me read it out loud for you. I toss a copper coin, and then I toss a nickel coin. So I've got two coins, first a copper one, and then a nickel one. What are the chances that I will see a head followed by a head? So what are the chances I'll see two heads in a row by tossing one coin and then a second coin? All right, so I know we can probably think about this one just in our heads right away, but let me show you how to draw this problem as a garden path system. So I'm going to imagine people coming down a garden path system, and the first thing I'm going to do is toss the copper coin, which means they're going to come to a fork where they toss a copper coin, and they'll either get a heads or they'll get a tails. All right, now let's think about this. Those that get a tails right away, I don't want them for this problem. So I'm gonna send them to a house I'm gonna call the don't want house. I don't want that result. I'm gonna send these people to get a tail straight to the don't want house. <laughs> All right, but those that get a head with a copper coin get to keep playing. And they'll come to another fork where they toss the nickel coin, which means they can go either two ways. They either get a head on the nickel coin or they get a tail on the nickel coin. If they get a tail, I don't want it. Those people straight to the don't want house. But those who get a head here means they've got a head and then a head. That's exactly what I want. They get to go to the want house. So there's the roof on the want house. Send these people to the want house. So there is a garden path system that depicts this probability problem. And now I can answer it by just drawing the area that goes with this problem. So let's see. Let me draw a block of area. I'll do it here. I think it's enough space. So what happens is people go down, they first split into two. All right, split into two. 
Half the people, half the people. Oh, the people go this way, are straight to the don't want house. Don't want that. But these people get to, get to keep going. And these people, in fact, go to another fort where they split into two, where they either go up to the don't want house or they go to a want house. In which case, now I can see this is the proportion of the square of people that end up in the want house. I can see that one quarter of the people will end up here. That is one quarter of the people end up here. The chances must be, oh, the chances of ending up there are one quarter. Beautiful. We've just solved a probability problem. Let's do another one. I'll be right back. Have to clean the board. Okay, so here's another probability problem. Uh, I'll read it out loud because again, my handwriting is terrible. I toss a copper coin. Then I toss a nickel coin. And then I roll a die. Great. Toss a coin, toss a coin, roll a die. What are the chances that I'll see a head, then a head, then a five or a six? So what are the chances I get a head, then a head, and then a five or six on that die? All right, okay, great. So we worked that out for sure, but it's kind of fun to draw the garden paths. I'm gonna draw the garden paths. Now, you know we're gonna have two houses. We're gonna have the don't want house, where I don't want to end up. So we'll have the don't want house, and then we'll have the want house. Two houses. So let's draw a garden path system to mimic that problem. So the first thing people do is they'll come and toss a copper coin. So people come down, which means they'll toss a coin, and they can either get a heads or a tails. If they get a heads, great. If they get a tails, not so great. I want to first see a head. So if people get tails right off the bat, straight to the don't want house. If people get a head, they get to keep going with a nickel coin, which means they'll toss a coin, they can either get, I guess it's a two-way fork, heads or tails. Those who get tails the second time, oh, I don't want it, I want heads. Don't want house, off you go. Those who get heads, keep going, head, head, yep. So then they, coin, coin, roll a die. Okay, six possible outcomes. This means they must come to a six-way fork. Golly gee, okay, so they get a one, they get a two, they get a three, they get a four, they get a five, or they get a six. A little bit messy, but hopefully that's clear enough for the work we're doing. And if they roll the die and we want them to get a five or a six. So those who get a one, don't want. Two, don't want. Three, don't want. Four, don't want. Five, want. Six, I want. Beautiful. Okay, I know it's kind of crazy, but it's kind of fun to draw that diagram because this is the diagram that represents that probability problem. Grand. In fact, now we can ask what proportion of people end up in the want house. That is, if someone comes down this path, what are the chances they'll end up in the want house? Well, we can work it out. Let's just draw the area model somewhere. Where am I going to draw it? Um, running out of space. Maybe this is enough space. Hopefully it is. Hopefully this is enough space. A little bit tight, but we'll see, see how we're doing. All right, so let's follow what happens to people down this garden path system. First of all, they come down, they split into two. Great, with either heads or tails. But those who get tails, straight to the don't want house. Those who get heads, get to keep going. And what do they do? They split into two. All right, split into two, so I'll do it horizontal split this time. Uh, those that get tails, oh, don't want. Those that get heads, keep going. These people still keep going. These people then come to this crazy six-way fork. All right, so let me divide those people to six. So maybe I'll do like this, little six like that. They should be perfect six. Well, they should be perfect six of halves of halves of the square. Well, we're in some fraction. What fraction are we in? But anyhow, yeah, for now, I see that those who get one, don't want. Those who get two, don't want. Those who get three, don't want. Those who get four, don't want. Those who get five, want. Six, want. So I can see now, this is the want part. Those people and those people end up in the want house. They end up in the want house and the question is, what fraction of the square is that? Whoa, uh, there's probably lots of different ways to look at that. For example, I can see the six little rectangles there, which means there'll be six rectangles there, and another six there, another six there. So actually there'll be a total of 24 of these little rectangles, that's two twenty-fourths. That's one twelfth of the entire area. Or maybe I could say one of these little pink rectangles is one sixth of one half of one half of the square. So that's a uh, one twenty-fourth, and I've got two of them, two twenty-fourths. However you want to think about it, the answer is two twenty-fourths. One twelfth of the people end up in the want house. That is, send someone down, they've got a one twelfth chance of ending up in the want house. Which means the answer to the problem is, my chances of seeing a head followed by a head followed by a five or a six must be one twelfth. That answers the probability problem. This is so fun. So let's do another one. But I have to clean the board. I'll be right back. 
Okay, so here's a very classic looking problem from probability theory. A bag contains two red and three yellow balls. So I've got a bag full of balls, five balls, of which two are red and three are yellow. Great. I will pull out a ball at random. Okay, pull out a ball, note its colours. Oh, look what colour it is, and then put the ball aside. I'll then pull out a second ball at random from the four balls that remain in the bag. Alright, so I took one out, so there's four left. Pull out a second ball. Pull it out, note its colour. Oh, look at its colour, and also put that aside as well. Great, so I pulled out one ball, put it aside, put it a second ball, put it aside, and the question is, what are the chances I see two red balls? So I pulled out a red one, and then I pulled out a red one. All right, so again, we'll do a garden path for this one. It's gonna be kind of fun, but I need to make one point. When you first do pulling out a ball, there's actually five balls to choose from. I, mean, I know it seems like we've got two identical red balls and three identical yellow balls, but you know, there could be specks of dust on it. Because maybe there's a red ball with one speck of dust and a red ball with seven specks of dust. And there's a yellow ball with no dust, one with 13 specks of dust and 40 specks of dust on the third one. So it doesn't matter if we can tell the balls apart or not. But basically there's two red, two yellow, three yellow, but five balls in all. So initially there's actually five options pull out the red ball with one speck of dust, or pull out the red ball with seven specks of dust, or pull out the yellow ball with no specks of dust. That's what's really going on here. All right, so that means when I draw a garden path for this, this first action splits five ways. Pull out one of the red balls, pull out the other red ball. Pull out a yellow ball, pull another yellow ball, or pull out another yellow ball. So let me draw that, let me draw that. But let me draw the fun part first, because we know there's gonna be a want house, what we want to see, and there's the don't want house. Don't want. Do, 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 do. Grand. All right, here goes. So as we do this experiment, we do pull out a ball first, and yes, we just observed, it's a five-way split. There's two possible red balls I could pull out, red or the other red, and there's three yellow, possible yellow balls I can pull out. One yellow, the third yellow, or the second, there's one yellow, the second yellow, or the third yellow. <sighs> oh, but when I do the first experiment, I don't want yellow. In fact, seeing yellow right off the bat, sends me straight to the don't want house. I don't want those. Then it's these ones. So I pulled, I pulled out a red ball, I put my hand in, put out a ball, said, oh, look, it's red. Put it aside. Now there's four balls remaining. Okay. I watched the case, one red one's gone, so it must be what? One red and three yellows in the situation? So this one now splits four ways. I can either get the remaining red ball, or I might get one of the three yellow ones. This yellow, that yellow, or that yellow. Which means, yellows I don't want, don't want, don't want. But if I get a red a second time, because I want to see a red, two red balls, a red, then a red, exactly what I want. Straight to my want house. And the same thing happens here for pulling out this first ball with one speck of dust. There are four balls left in the bag. There's one red, there's a yellow, there's a yellow, and there's a yellow. My picture's getting messy, but if I get a yellow, straight to the don't want house. Off I go. And my picture's looking like a jellyfish. But if I got a red followed by a red, that's exactly what I want. Grand. That's exactly it. There's a fabulous, glorious, messy picture that encapsulates that probability problem. So I know what are the chances if I walk down the skeleton path system of me ending up in the want house. All right, so that's red and red. The reason I said that loud is I think I need to erase this so I can use the space to draw the area of that. So let me do it. So this is going to be a bit smudgy, forgive me, but hopefully it's okay for what we need to do right now. All right, let me draw the area model of this. Big enough square, hopefully. All right, so what happens? People come down this garden path, they split five ways. Get the first red ball, or get the second red ball, get the first yellow, the second yellow, or the third yellow. Great. If they get a yellow, don't want, don't want, don't want. But if you get a red, you split, what, four ways, four ways. So half, half, and half. And you either get a yellow, don't want, yellow, I don't want, yellow, I don't want, or you get a red, which I want. And then if you got the other red, if you went down this way in this garden path system, you again split four ways. All right, four ways. Either get a yellow, don't want, yellow, don't want, yellow, don't want, or red, which I want. So that means the proportion of people going this garden, down this garden path system, getting what I want, is that fraction of the square. Ooh, what fraction is that? Uh, let's see. So that's, okay, all right, I can do it, I can do it. Because this is fifths, so that's two fifths, that's one quarter of two fifths. One quarter of two fifths is two twentieths. One tenth of the people end up there. One tenth of them end up in that want house, which means the chances of me seeing what I want, a red ball followed by a red ball, must actually be one tenth.
10%. Now, this is crazy. This is a crazy picture. You might be cleverer than me and think to do this instead. Let me erase my board. Well, I'll erase that part of the board. This seems insane. What if I actually did little weights, little, like, little, little numbers on my paths? For example, I know when people come down here, two-fifths of them will go this way and three-fifths of them will go this way. So what if I labeled my paths like this? Two-fifths go this way and three-fifths go that way. Now, if you're one of these yellow people, this will be for the yellows, this is for the reds, you'll go straight to the don't want house. I should have drawn my houses first, sorry. Don't want and want. All right, so if you're one of these yellow people, three-fifths of you, those people will be them, go to the don't want house. But of the two-fifths people here, they're identical. These are the same, and I know that actually one quarter of them will go red, which is what I want, and three quarters of them will go to the don't want house, getting yellow. Ditto here. So these people behave in the same way with one quarter of them getting red, one quarter of them, and three quarters of them getting yellow, which I don't want. So maybe if I was cleverer than I was here, I could label the diagram this way and see it much more simply. The fact it doesn't look like a jellyfish anymore. But then when I draw the area model for this, aha, aha, if I draw the area model for this, then I have to do a little lopsided area model. Because my area model would be, what would it be? First of all, they don't split in half, they split into two-fifths and three-fifths. So I better divide into fifths, and two-fifths go here, and three-fifths go there, to yellow, which I don't want. And then, these people that survive so far split into quarter and three-quarters. So I better divide this into quarters, beautiful. Which means what I want, that's what I don't want, they're the yellow people, are this part, whoops, which is here which I believe actually is the same diagram we had before, and now I can see I've got one quarter of two fifths, one tenth of the people, of this block of people, end up in the want house. The chances of me seeing two reds must be 10%. So if you want to be clever and start drawing weighted garden paths like this, then great, go for it. Or if you want to be like crazy like me and draw jellyfish and draw all the paths, crazy, fabulous, go for it. All good math is correct and good. So whatever suits your style is good for you and good for everyone. Go for it.